There is a violent evil felony that strikes the very heart of a home. Violence against women and girls is a global pandemic. A crime where victims are never willing to break the wall of silence due to the high level of frustrations coupled with the fear that surrounds domestic violence. Once they realize that it's a problem and that they actually need help, it makes things a lot uh, easier because now the healing process begins and it becomes faster. Zile cases tunapata almost daily. Uwezi okay. kukosa kesi ya bibi na bwana. Now the man now is setting out to have an open relationship with this girl under my own now. Yaani kiwazi was we would wish them to also see how are the other women probably are trying to deal with this situation. Midrift Human Rights Network in a bid to curb domestic violence plus other forms of violence sought to know exactly what happens behind the closed doors. We are looking on issues of safety and security and more so towards the issues of community security. Uh, in uh, the PM Plus, we have five coping strategies. The uh, first one is called managing stress, which is a breathing exercise. The second one is about, is about managing problems. The second one is about uh, uh, creating activity. And then there's social support. And then there's one for now, how to help others. There is a world of misunderstanding and ignorance when it comes to domestic violence. To most people, violence within intimate relationships occurs only in the news headlines and ends there with shocking episodes of intimate partners fighting and hacking each other to death. Gender-based violence cases have been on the rise. What she said was an abusive marriage. Rise in child abuse and domestic violence. But what exactly is domestic violence? So domestic violence is quite broad and the most uh, common form of domestic violence that is known out there is the intimate partner violence. So this is violence between two people, like a couple. That is the most common, but then, it, like I say, it goes beyond. Uh, let's say in a family setup whereby we have a mother, a father and children. Uh, when violence happens in that home, it will not only affect the mother and father, but it will run down to children, then the nieces, then everyone that is around that family setup, setup will be affected by the domestic violence here. trying to piece her life together after suffering a horrendous experience in the hands of her own dad when she went to ask him for university fees. He lured her into booking a room in one hotel in Nairobi only to pounce on her later that evening, robbing her of her dignity. Her mom refused to understand her and blamed her for the incidents. I was brought up by a single mom in a family of four, but unfortunately my mom also was uh, also from a split marriage. Now the two siblings that I had, my firstborn sister and brother, they were raised by their dad, and my brother and I were raised by my mom. So later on I came to realize that that dad was not my dad. I had my own separate dad. But all along, my mom shielded me from everything. Actually, she was the iron lady in my life. She took me to the best schools in the country. I learned in a boarding school from class two to class six. I was in a very nice school in Western, St. Anne's Mumias. 
Then after that she brought me to Lions, Nakuru. You know, she yeah. was Zungu Mababi. Yeah. See, I, 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 I did my class eight there. Then I went to Marymount. And she actually worked hard for that. Mm. She was, there was never a day I would actually sit down and remember that, hey, mother liwai kwa na upungufu in one way or another. So from there I joined, I, was, I received a calling letter to join the university. But by the time I was joining the university, my mom had stopped working. She was working as a senior nurse at War Memorial, so she stopped working. And that meant that actually now things became tighter. Someone is in pain, uh, physical pain, it's really hard to sit with them and talk to talk with them or just listen them out. So first, we come from a point of, have you gotten medical attention for you to be able to come to me as a counselor to be able to help you see we, how we can go about this. So that would be the first thing. Again, in most cases, in as much as it may be a physical abuse, you won't find them coming to me with their injuries. They may have first taken care of the injuries and then they realize, oh, they get referred to a counselor and told that you need to seek counseling for your situation. So in most cases, you'll find they've come to you after they have dealt with their bruises and their injuries. So I took, I took it upon myself. I decided, ah, after all, everybody is born with a mom and a dad. Yeah. So I went, d did some digging here and there, and pressurized some of her friends until one of them told me the names to my dad, mm -hmm. where he's from and where he was at that particular point. So through Yellow Pages, those days you never used to have Google, mm -hmm. Yellow Pages, <laughs> diary. Well, I went, got his contact, and we communicated via phone the first time. I introduced myself and then he said he's eager to meet me, so we organized, I went to visit him in Nairobi. So from the way he used to talk to Hyongea over the phone, maybe if I go there and end up Chana, we, we talk, we discuss, and then I, get back, I come back to Nakuru. It was sounding positive. Actually, it was so positive, back to a point, even the last time Sasa Ndionyende Kumona, he had actually asked me to carry the account number where he's going to deposit, deposit the money for the fees. Yeah. And then I was to carry for him some other documentations yeah. from the calling letter na kujanga na admission papers mingi. So he had asked me to carry those documents for, for him to go through. And you finally anini, ani lipia fees and then I'm ready to go. That was almost a month before I joined college. So that time I communicated to him and I told, me the, I told him this was the last time. Then the next month we were to, to get to school. So he asked me to go to Nairobi. He even sent me, by the way, he used to send me fare. But then I never used to tell my mom because obviously my mom would boom at a lupuka. So me naenda. So that's why I couldn't sleep. So this one particular time now it was the last chance for him to actually do the, the, the check writing or whatever it is that he wanted to give me in terms of fees. So when I went Kapata, he was quite busy at his office. He had dignitaries who had visited him and he told me he's so swamped with work that he could not have time with me. So he asked me if I could spend the night in Nairobi then come back the next day. Mm. I mean, Kaona, if it's the last mm. thing and that's the only thing I was required to do, it was okay. Mm. So that time, Akatoka Kazini, Akanebea, let's go, I get you a place where you can, you can rest for the night. Mm. So we went to the city center. Mm -hmm. His office is around, was around those areas, up to Tao Tao. So we, we, we actually, he drove me to that place, the, what do you call it, the city center. Mm. Then we looked for, a very posh hotel. I think it was called Samagat. Mm -hmm. The the road is called Taitalen. I can't remember very well, but yeah, Some yeah. Kwenda uko the 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 hotel was storied. So to kinda list about accommodation, we were told it's available. And that time it was not it was not peak season. So the rooms were virtually empty. So 
We were looking for the best room. He felt that I should have the best room. So, Apo Akasema, okay, by the way, the room, the room is okay, and he was even he even paid ten thousand for the room. So that time I can be ah fanya ivi enda ukonda ni wangalie kama mfereji na nini ina maji. I can't pay ten thousand for a room and yet it does not have water. So I got inside. To, you make up several turns, then you get to the bathroom. So when I made those turns, getting to the bathroom, I put on the shower. It was there. I put on the, 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 the flash, the toilet flash, it was working, so that meant the water was there. Coming back into the room, now the living room now, let me call it living room, sitting A. Coming back, I was so shocked to find the man naked in front of me. And the attendant we were with that time was nowhere to be, to be seen. Ah, kabaki yani unajua ile, hey, seriously, yani unashtuko nana mtu yuko uchi, and this is supposed to be your dad. So the first thing that clicked in my mind, I rushed for the door. So when I went to run for the door, I tried opening the door. Apparently, it had been locked, and I couldn't open it. So I tried running towards the, the window. That's the time Sasa Nika clicked that the shangu he apandi pabai. So kufika kwa dirisha, I'm hanging from the top balcony, not actually the, the, the window itself. Looking down, people look like ants. They are, yeah, they are too tiny. I'm screaming, nobody can hear me. So he grabbed me and he had his way. Then after that, he started telling me, oh, now I've proven that you're actually my daughter. Uh, from now onwards, in fact, I'm going to get you a passport. We'll be traveling together. I'm a person who travels in and out of the country going places and then we'll be going with you now we'll have that bond you know the mom would later die in a terrorist attack in lamu back in 2014 leaving her daughter to carry on with the burden of guilt that caused her more harm than good. The, 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 that time, I remember there was a time it reached a point where my mom and I used to, yani, ilifika wakati tulikuwa na some tension between us and okay according to uh, traditions ama beliefs ama whatever they would say that tulikula kwa chungu moja now that thing i think ili somehow ili ili break relationship yangu mi na mama angu we need to bring back that now that my mom is dead the major problems we have in kenya or we have had for the longest time is finding a definition yeah. for what defilement is sorry for what domestic violence is because yeah. we live with it we have normalized it we have the problems but you can't really point out this is domestic violence yeah. because even when a father mm -hmm. uh, defiles a daughter or incest happens in the house that is some form of domestic yeah. violence when children are exposed to this psychological mm -hmm. uh, violence then it's 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 still a form of domestic violence so it has been really hard to find a proper definition of what domestic violence is yeah. and for that reason we have seen so many people suffer from what really has not been defined for the longest time okay. yeah after years of a pain that never seemed to end Lucy met the love of her life and they got married. They were blessed with three kids but things went south when her husband met his brother's girlfriend. He fell in love with his own brother's girlfriend and that was the beginning of trouble in his once bubbly marriage. Things went south. Honestly, don't 
because it reached a time the man just decided to be funny, he used to act funny, sometimes he would disappear, come back. Sometimes he just not want to associate, you know, he let you at the up, be asking him such questions and just give him very weird answers. But then maybe I felt maybe I'm the one who's pressurizing him, maybe I'm giving him too much on his face. Then one time he just told me he wants to go visit the mom, the man is in Western province. So, in fact, he didn't even tell me. I went somewhere, coming back, the kids tell me, Daddy Amanda. I'm like, ah, Amanda, what? And he was just back to suitcase and left. Calling him his mutage, calling him his mutage. Three days later, the mom calls me and tells him, tells me, Ati Amanda, Papa So, after that, I think communication between us was just funny. 90% of the time we end up when he calls them out, when I call him, I end up arguing on things that I don't even understand. So the mom wanted to call me. different uh, types of uh, violent cases. We have uh, physical, where someone will literally uh, do harm to your body. We have sexual violence, where someone is forced to have sex against their will. Those are the main common ones. Uh, apart from that, you can also have a verbal Oh, verbal abuse is also one of them where someone just decides to use their mouth just to be able to hurt you. We also have um, psychological violence where someone does not do physical or sexual but they just torture you mentally and you're just living in a state of not knowing what to expect. You see, um, when it defines domestic relationships, mm -hmm. for example, we see even in-laws coming in. And in-laws can even be perpetrators of domestic violence. Okay. And I think that is one interesting thing that people are not really aware of. And everybody goes through it at some point, but how do we handle it? So I traveled with my children to, to Western. Upon reaching there to Kileo, to Missouri, and then the man had changed to Yani Nikama and Yango in avoid to So we had a family meeting, we discussed, we, told, we just talked about issues and said, man, he's okay, he just wanted time to breathe, but now he's, he's back on track. In fact, my thoughts, the mom was even suggesting I go live there to wish water so that we start to start from, uh, from, from scratch. So, so unfortunately, it reached a point, there was a girl there, was apparently the girlfriend to his brother. I mean, I met her, I knew she was, uh, we call, in coast language, we call them Mwanyumba. We are married in the same, in the same bond. So I used to treat her as such, my in-law, co-wife. Shock on me. Apparently now she was now the girlfriend. She had, she had switched camps. She was now the girlfriend. So, so when I was dating brothers. Yeah. She left the other one and jumped first with this one. So, when I said, my home is trying to talk to you, I'm going 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 to talk to you. So, the guy later on came, uh, came to me and told me, oh, uh, Mr. Fagali is saying 3,000. So, I kept on telling him, Dr. Patia, I have money in my phone, I'll, I'll send you through a person. I kept on forgetting. So at night when we went to sleep, he gave me his phone. I think there was something he wanted. He wanted me to text. Actually, no, I wanted to text somebody and I didn't have credit in my phone. So I can impart some way I can be shika to me I am. And he was sleeping next to me. So see me ni kachukwa simu ni kio na text. A phone call. The 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 a phone call comes through. So I picked the call. And then the, the other end, the person, it's a lady, and she says, Iyo pesa elfutatu nukuni tumie, nitangoja mbaka sangapi. Then 
that's when it clicked in my head. This guy was asking me for money to send to one of the guys. So he picked the call and put on his ear and then he became so angry, he switched it off and then he turned on. Hey, hey. I've never seen beating like that. In fact I have by the way I have photos of that 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 uh, the beat in my face, how it looked like. I, I posted with Facebook. He bet me thoroughly. He actually put his knee on my chest. Can I have got from make four? I can she came. So he was actually punching my face. He kept on telling me, "Bola kibele bele na ujito." When do we provoke? Bola we mpiki asim. Then I kept on asking, "How do I know her number to call her? How do I know who?" And the number was unsaid. How did I know who she is for me to call her? Then I tell her to ask you for money or ask me for money. I don't even understand to nonge jeni. He bet me. I kept on screaming. But where the house where we were staying at was far from where the mother's house was. And that time the kids were in the mother's house and it was raining outside. He met me from about Sane, Zosiku to Sanane. And he shoved me and that time he put a magina kwa jag kandu kitanda. He gong me kama gika chini. Mwa gika chini I slept I, it was a tiled room. So ni ka muka chini. Kwa muka chini ana mishika from my hair and an infuta. Mbusha uko kwa kitanda and it was like now meant to now kill me. It was now, I don't know, 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 I don't know. Violence against women and girls is a global pandemic. It is a moral affront to all women and girls and to us all. A mark of shame on all our societies and a major obstacle to inclusive, equitable and sustainable development. At its core, Violence against women and girls, in all its forms, is the manifestation of a profound lack of respect. A failure by men to recognize the inherent equality and dignity of women. It is an issue of fundamental human rights. The violence can take many forms, from domestic violence to trafficking, from sexual violence in conflict to child marriage, genital mutilation and femicide. It is an issue that arms the individual, but also has far-reaching consequences for families and for the society. Zile cases tunapata almost daily. Uwezi kakosa kesi ya bibi na bwana. Most of them ni assault, na threatening. Unapata... Bwana ametoka kwa nyumba kwenda kutafuta kibarua ameacha bibi na watoto hawana chakula then wakati bibi anajaribu kuuliza bwana akirudi jioni ana inspect bibi awe amepika chakula na in real sense hakwa cha pesa so unapata akifika kwa nyumba kitisha chakula kama hakuna chakula vita inaanza so vita ikianza mara nyingi ndio utapata wamama ndio wanakimbia hapa bila viatu wakija kushtaki vile bwana amewapiga but kwa sababu ya sensitivity of the case you see ukiona kama ni bibi na bwana huwa tu advocate hizo cases ziende kotini sana huwa tunatumia mara mingi ni counseling sana we tuna either tupige simu tupigie bwana simu akuje ama tuna summon wao huko tuna barua ya polisi inaitwa compelling ilitwa 252 p52 yeah it is a compelling letter unaita the wale party yule party mwingine unamuita at the station level akuja muone kama mnaweza solve hiyo problem most of them huwa wanakuja unapata kila mtu you see kama hakuna mediator katikati wale watu hawawezi wakapata peace kwa nyumba so ndio huwa tuna chip in hapo kula mtu anajieleza unajaribu kuwa council mnatosha kukaa hivi na hivi na kama una ni vizuri uambie bibi kuwa umeenda umekosa kibarua Eh naye aelewe. Eh communication, tunaambia communication ni muhimu katika kila familia. Yeah. We have our doctors going in to give expert eh, expert uh, evidence what they have taken through 
that maybe yeah. somebody has come and uh, maybe they suffered domestic violence they have like maybe scars yeah. they have uh, things like uh, maybe somebody is hurt somewhere so the, all that is documented down so the doctor will pick that uh, PRC and then we'll document it in the P3 form and then they will give that now the evidence they will explain this uh, client came this time and then uh, he they we checked on him he had this kind of bruises and they were in this particular place so that it can give expert evi any evidence on at the court of law if somebody is going through violence but because they, 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 they are better off being inside it than outside because they know today I'll just be beaten and tomorrow I'll wake up and go. And, but fear of the unknown is if I leave this person, what will become of me? Maybe I don't have a job. I am depending on my abuser. So if I leave, how will I feed my children? How will I parent? So you'd rather be there and be taken care of than go. <laughs> The Laikipia University graduate and a teacher by profession is now a single mother of seven babies and has been struggling to raise them alone in the streets of Nakuru. Basically, whenever you see something is not working, 
You always have an option of walking away, okay. walking out. Do not care about what the society thinks because at the end of the day, the society is out there. It is about you. So if maybe you're having an issue with someone, try and talk to that person. If the de between the two of you, it is not working out, you can bring in a third party, maybe your family or somebody. If it does not work, then leave. leave. Just leave. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you will violate this person, you will beat this person. Yeah. If you end up killing the person, you will go to jail yeah. for life. Then what? There is no point. There is no point. Yeah. So dialogue, if it's not working, you can seek alternatives mm -hmm. to sort out the, the issues. That's where we sleep. Then our sofa set was uh, the our sofa set was the suitcase where we used to keep our clothes. Again, I can put that number here. I'm putting it on a carrier. There was even a time at a sequel and Jiko at a sequel and Chichota was free. So we would wait. Come and go upload to Nangoja to a shopika past Sata. Don't try to get a cousin. I just want to see him. He said, "Yeah, Jiko, he don't go to Sukuria." So yeah, we've seen the worst of situations. There was a time I delayed paying rent for it was about four days. We were, we were locked out of the house. And we used to now move from one place to Nangalia where we can get a house that is vacant. After the day, we have to be out of that house by six so that in case we have to pick up for six people, we have to go to the house. 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 I have actually begged someone not to run away from us. There was even a time I was pregnant and I was walking, and then I met a man eating maize. I felt so hungry and my throat was so dry. I said, I to you, my And he gave me the days and I went eating. I went to eat. But that's life. So I met him with some contact. Because when my mom passed, okay, I was the next of king. I have the documentations and everything. But my mom took care of the next of kin. I have the documentation and everything. But my siblings felt that I'm the one who caused my mother's death. She was also in that attack, the church attack. So when she passed on, my siblings actually sent me away from my mom's property. So they told me to go back to my husband. So. <laughs> According to a study conducted by Midrift Human Rights Network in partnership with the Danish Institute Against Torture last year, on the prevalence of gender-based violence in two informal settlements of Nakuru, that is Rhonda and Karaguta, 61.8% of women reported physical violence from their husbands, with the most common form being slapping, pushing, and being forced to have sexual intercourse. The gender-based violence study report that was launched last year by Midrift Human Rights Network indicated that 23% of the women reported that their husbands drank alcohol, 9% of the women reported that their husbands abused drugs. While gender experts believe that there is a uniquely human feeling of wanting to be loved that is usually intertwined tightly with the rage surrounding domestic violence, probably the absolute question to ask a domestic violence survivor would be, how did you live? and not why did you stay? Marriage is a serious thing. Okay. It's a commitment. Okay. It's a taking vows. Yeah. You can imagine, I was just discussing with uh, some friends of mine, and yeah. I was telling them, you have stayed with this person for about 10 good years. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, this person has started uh, violating mm -hmm. uh, to you, mm -hmm. or even to the children. And then, you, you know, it's a build-up family for 10 good years. You've had children, you've had property, you've had, you know. So there is a lot of security that you have uh, put within your family. You can imagine now thinking of now uh, how you can lose that. 
that investment. In, in that investment yeah. within a period of just because yeah. you have been violated. Mm. You get me? Yeah. So one looks at it like I've invested a lot. Mm. I have so much security in this thing. I am so part of it yeah. and now getting up. So that's the reason why people have been suffering violence and they're staying in it. Okay. Yeah. And they're not able to see it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I told you mm -hmm. it now becomes a cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Until mm, uh, the only moment mm -hmm. that will happen is mm -hmm. When now it goes out of hand, mm -hmm. either somebody bruised you with a knife mm -hmm. or somebody is threatening you with yeah. killing you, yeah. that's when now you know mm -hmm. that now it is threatening my life, yeah. then you're able to go and do that. So according to the statistics that we've gotten from these two uh, offices, mm -hmm. you've seen that there's um, a high number of cases uh, in Kurisoi. The two Kurisois, we have Kurisoi North and South, mm -hmm. that is mostly populated by the Kalenjin community. Uh, that uh, according to our view, they're still uh, into the traditions okay. whereby it's very patriarchal. Okay. Uh, so they still uh, practice FGM, they still practice wife beat battery, yeah. such like things. And also Nevasha, some parts that are neighboring Narok uh, County. Okay. So we've seen a high number of cases of GBV in those areas. Mm -hmm. So we've come up with uh, specific programs for these two different uh, locations in the county mm -hmm. to ensure that we respond to these cases. Mm -hmm. So we've done a lot of uh, sensitization, community sensitization in these several uh, sub-counties. Mm -hmm. uh, we strategically decided to start with the three sub-counties, mm -hmm. then we move along to the other sub-counties. Mm -hmm. So we've done community sensitization programs whereby we involve the community. Mm -hmm. We also involve other key duty bearers to ensure that we sensitize the community on what GBV is, what domestic violence is, mm -hmm. where can they get help, what is the legal framework on GBV, on domestic violence, yeah. and also mm -hmm. what are the, what the consequences yeah. in a family. Yeah. yeah, another thing that we've done as a county, mm -hmm. we're in the process of developing a gender policy mm -hmm. that also uh, enlightens mm -hmm. or, uh, or talks about mm -hmm. uh, GBV, or areas of addressing GBV and mechanisms of prevention. To some victims, they got sick and tired of getting sick and tired due to the frustrations, the humiliations and tears melted together over a number of years. I would say this, violence is like a cycle. Yeah. It's like a cycle, okay. you, it goes round and round. You, you have someone between you, then you have a trigger, of, of, of a sort, then they come, they, they, they ask for forgiveness, and then you forgive them, then all of a sudden something else comes up like a trigger, then the violence comes again. Yeah. So it happens, because many of those people who have reported yeah. all the time, yeah. it's not the first time that it's happening. So why am I saying this? It's become the norm. Yeah. So it's like you're beaten one day, you need, you, you forgive, then you're beaten the other time, you forgive. Sometimes you refuse even to say because you're fearful because of, you know, retaining the marriage or even uh, taking, you know, covering the children. So, yes, people have started normalizing it until people can't report it anymore. While some women feel that the abuse is their fault, abusive partners are often described as possessive, jealous, and even hot-tempered, hence their heinous acts. Struggling to be... Uh, staying with a narcissistic person, mm -hmm. uh, a narcissist will tell you, mm -hmm. and I will prove it to you, mm -hmm. that it is your fault that you're being beaten. Mm -hmm. It is your fault that mm -hmm. this is happening to you. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, they have power over you. Mm -hmm. So you see, mm -hmm. they have normalized mm -hmm. violence. Exactly. They have normalized mm -hmm. the idea of mm -hmm. uh, blaming everything on you. Okay. I beat you because of mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. I beat you because you did that. Mm -hmm. That is a narcissist. Mm -hmm. it, it is a narcissist that can do that. Mm -hmm. It is not about uh, any other person. So at the end of the day, it becomes really hard because there is, there is that. So because, and, and another thing that I said earlier, it is because of the culture of violence. We've been brought up to know it is okay for a woman to be beaten. If a woman, if a man does not beat a woman, it means that he doesn't love her, which is crap.
if Irene Nekesa, I did not her real name, knew her high school lover would turn out to be the worst nightmare of her life, she'd never have fallen in love. So, anything my parents are able to make a film, attack and I'll get the worst about them. You see, you want to see what's kids, and you're not going that was the reason. You're not going to And he, he created a lot of hatred with my people. I could talk about one career anywhere, I could talk about any job, I could talk about any employed anywhere, I could talk about any end of church, I could talk about any home. However, she now laughs off her previous hectic relationship after she found new love. In psychology believe that the cycle of intimate partner violence repeats itself and it poses an imminent danger to the victims, insisting that the worst thing to do is to do nothing at all. In, in some cases you'll find few actually go back to their perpetrator, but some of them may have come out of such situations of which it's easier to deal with such cases but now when it comes to the victims still living with the perpetrator it's just to be able to try and see what is it that I'm doing to trigger this is it my, what role am I playing so if I have a role that I'm playing, what should I do to be able to reduce me being abused? Most victims believe there's no help out there because people don't like to be involved in other people's businesses. It's very difficult 
for a man who, who, who is going through domestic violence, like that friend I was talking about, he underwent to that for two years. But out of the two years, there's no single day that he ever reported. He never came out, yeah. just used to talk about it in small tones yeah. with close friends, yeah. very close, not everybody, yeah. very close friends. Mm -hmm. Like there's a time he told me about it and I was of the idea, what do you think uh, your wife should be like, the authorities should take action? Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, 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 I can't go to police, how will they look at me? If I go to police, the police will ask you, are you really a man? or you are a woman, you come here to say that wife was beating you, what's up with you? Are you like stupid or something? How, 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 how does your wife... So that's the problem, they fear that's, the shame. They fear the shame, then the natural setting, the in African, mostly in African setting, a man should be like, you know, hardened, even if the head, even if something is happening so bad, you can't do a mistake of coming out. So most men who undergo this in Kenya, they will rather die with it and even just keep it or go with it to their graves than coming out. Then there's another problem. For example, uh, Mandela is being uh, whatever abused. There's another fear that if I go and report this thing to maybe uh, GBV center like at Karen Hospital to get help, maybe counseling, or at the police station level so that I get the P3 form and go to hospital, everything. How does society view me? as a man who has suffered gender-based violence. You'll get that <coughs> people will view me in a very negative perspective, whereby even if you go to those people who are like close friends, or maybe my age mates or anything, uh, most of them will even just laugh off. Violence has been normalized in, yani, it has been normalized to an extent whereby it is no longer, it is no longer like hidden anymore. For example, let's give an example of um, a man who has been beaten. Yeah. Because we're talking about domestic violence, and it happens to both gender, to any race, whether you're white, you're black, you're Indian, whatever. Or you're tall, you're short, you're Maasai, you're Kikuyu, it happens across all borders. So when a man is being beaten, when he goes to the police station or goes to the neighbors and tell them that by the baby angle, I'm pig, I'm an image on a baby angle, most of the time they'll be told, just man up. So at the end of the day, you see that we are normalizing, we are normalizing violence as much as we don't want to accept that we are normalizing violence, but we are really normalizing violence in a very, very bad way. On the other hand, law enforcers lack special training on how to deal with such sensitive matters of domestic violence. Uh, the relationship right now between the police and the public is on uh, a growth path. We can say things are beginning to take shape, improving a bit. But one of the things that brought the sour relationship between the police and the public uh, is how the police were trained. It is all about the training because before the reforms, they were trained. Uh, you know, the nature of the training was that you don't develop relationships exactly. with the public. Yeah. I had mentioned that. Yeah. So the nature of the training sometimes can make people to begin acting in a different manner. Yeah. With the new reforms, huh? because one of the new reforms was actually to reform even the training that is happening in Kiganjo and in Embakasi for the officers. And when you look at their curriculum right now, their syllabus right now has actually included issues of human rights, which were not there initially, when you look at when, when the police was actually a force, the kind of the training that they went through. So we realized that slowly by slowly, the trainings are actually beginning to infuse good morals huh? and uh, you know, encouraging the relationship between the police and the public early enough. So today, we can say that the relationship is actually improving. It is not to the level that we would actually wanted, yeah. but it's actually on the growth path. Mm -hmm. If at all, kama kuna vile mneza tusaidia katika ku kuwa somesha wale police officers wako katika hizi gender, gender desks training tungeomba sana kama wanaweza training kwa sababu most of them ni ile ya kuzaliwa wengine hawajapata training ni ile kujitolea that wisdom unapata uko na that wisdom you can talk with the people na unaweza saidia watu katika kuwa elimisha na kuwasaidia katika hizo cases za domestic hmm. in a bid to
prevent domestic violence and other forms of violence. Midrift Human Rights Network, being deeply rooted in the community, has put in place strategies to address violence through various programs. We've been running several programs since uh, 2009, but we went full blown in 2015 with bigger programs that addresses issues of human rights. Uh, uh, I'm majorly involved in a program called IUVP in short, but in full intersectoral urban violence prevention program that is funded by a Danish organization called uh, Dignity, Danish Institute Against Torture that works mainly around issues of torture, human rights and torture, and of course some elements of rehabilitation that is working around issues of mental health. So IUVP is a program, as the name suggests, that uh, we have localized in a name, um, we have uh, used, tried to contextualize in a Swahili name that uh, uh, is referred to Usalama Bora. So we are looking on issues of uh, safety and security mm -hmm. and more so towards uh, issues of uh, community security okay. and of course issues of gender-based violence, issues of sexual, and sexual violence, issues of partner intimate violence, issues of domestic violence in general. Yeah. So that, that program looks uh, around those issues. Um, people who go through violence had no psychosocial support. So the rehabilitation came into being as a result of, the, it's like a spin-off from urban, inter, uh, inter urban violence program. So in that program we saw that there were people who were going through a lot of violence, uh, gender-based violence, and of course there's domestic violence still there. So that means uh, we deal with both men and women. There are both men and women who undergo through violence. Then uh, in uh, rehabilitation, there's a program called Problem Management Plus, which is a World Health Organization program. We, as I said, in 2018 we did the research on root causes, risk factors and preventive strategies of violence, mostly looking at domestic violence. Mm -hmm. That research gives us a lot of uh, uh, information on root cases, what causes this violence at the domestic level. Two major issues arose. One, we found out that um, over 70 percent of those cases, the root causes are youth unemployment or a breadwinner at that household level being unemployed. Uh, the second one was uh, because we are looking mostly in informal settlements, to be clear that uh, most of them, around 60% of the, 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 the people within that uh, informal settlement, both in Akuru and Naivasha, that is Kaptembwa, Bondeni, and uh, Karagita in Naivasha, Karagita, Kayole, Kabati, and uh, Lakeview. Most of, uh, around 60% of uh, the perpetrators, or within the domestic spectrum of domestic violence, 60% use drugs. The impact of PM Plus yeah. excuse me, is to give the survivor an ability to cope and to come out of their situation. Yes, actually, because in, in, the, in uh, the PM Plus, we have five coping strategies. There is, the first one is called managing stress, which is a breathing exercise. The second one is about, is about managing problems. The second one is about uh, uh, creating activity. And then there's social support. And then there's one for now, how to help others. So the purpose of this, because um, the purpose of this program is for them to find a way to manage their problems, to manage themselves actually, and to cope with the situation that they're in. Because you see, um, I'm not saying violence is it's good, violence is not good. But there's a way you can learn how to avoid the violence. Actually, the word is to prevent the violence. The word is to prevent, actually, because Midrift is focuses on urban violence, prevent, urban violence prevention. So PM Plus, the, the tools that you're taught help you prevent the violence. Has, is that person who has been uh, traumatized or who has gone through uh, sexual and gender-based violence uh, feeling very safe and very secure when they report their cases to the police station level, all right? So there is some little change uh, that is already happening at the station level, courtesy of the police reforms, uh, 
but a lot still needs to be done. Allow me to mention some few things on the lot that needs to be done. Number one, when you go at the station level, you realize that the infrastructure at the station level is very poor. All right? So number one, one of the things that needs to happen at the station level and even at the gender desk is the entire infrastructure of the station level needs to happen there. The second thing that needs to happen is that those, the officers who are manning the gender-based violence yeah. desk or the gender desk must actually continuously undergo training so that then they know how to deal with the cases of gender-based violence. In the program that we are implementing, the REINVENT program, that is one of the things that we aspire uh, to facilitate uh, the stations uh, to actually do. The officers manning the gender desks should, must actually go through uh, the necessary training for them to be able to handle the cases. Um, domestic violence is a problem. Mm. It's a problem out there. And um, it's something that can be worked. It's a work in progress for domestic violence. And I think um, what MIDIF has done is it has made milestones. Yes. You realize that even in the absence of a complete reform at the station level, uh, things like peace reforms have actually become a challenge at the station level. Where you go, you are a victim of gender-based violence, sexual gender-based violence. Huh? But then when you go there to report the case, for you to get the P3 form, you are told to go and uh, download it from the, from the cyber. To come and so that then you come, you bring it, it is actually filled both at the station level and at the hospital level. That is double trauma. These are people who require a place or an environment where when they come, they get exactly what they need and they actually served effectively. Uh, this one, I mean, this, this particular program looks at around addressing issues of violence. Looking forward, as an institution, we, look, we, we would really wish to have a society that uh, lives along respecting human rights and of course, uh, you know, when you violate or you abuse somebody, of course you are infringing on his or her uh, uh, human rights. So we are looking at a state where there will be high levels of attainment of human rights standards, mm -hmm. respecting and you know, promoting human rights issues. In terms of violence, we are really looking at uh, in, uh, having, mm -hmm. as our studies have informed us, mm -hmm. that the levels are high. And if you look at 70%, that's extremely high. We are looking at a level where we will be talking about 20%, 10%. And of course, we are privy to the fact that mm -hmm. we cannot entirely re eradicate yeah, violence that will be there, but at least we have a low percentage of violence as opposed to the studies we've, uh, we've done. The organization has been working hand in hand with community stakeholders through the local leadership supported through development of collective leadership and evidence-based place-based leadership network for individual and collective responsibility. In our area, we all work together. Hakuna kusema mimi ni community policing, mimi ni administrator, mimi ni... We all work and we coordinate and cooperate together. So in the morning, if you come to your office and you are reported that someone was domestically violated, the first thing you do, kama ni mzee wa kijija mwemleta, is we report at the police station. We pick the victim, tunampeteka police station, and a report and and kilwa in a work of occurrence book the other day and then and attach you to an officer to talk about your office and and kill a p3 in a process you then and a two more medical okay so then do you do follow up i'm okay the local police in nature we do follow up for every case the first thing we do when a, a client who are domestic violence, a mefikishwa, medical, we have a special officer. We are working in collaboration in the with all the other departments. Okay. So, to call an officer and buy an item, Madam Murage. Murage, make sure that patient ame tibiwa kutoka PGH na wenzake, akisha madiza kutibiwa, abepewa mandawa, 
kama alikuwa sexually violated amepewa kila kitu yote ya ku prevent transmission of sexual transmitted diseases then after that anarudishwa police station akikuja tuko na special desk ya gender based violence na domestic violence katika kila police station yetu tuko na officers wale wako hapo huyo officer na yeye kazi yake ni ku make sure the moment p3 imefikishwa ame create a file na amechukua statement kutoka kwa the victim mm. ameandikisha statement amepeana kama anajua mwenye kum kumabuse mm. amepeana majina yake mm. na kama amujui amemchora ame sketch ya identification mm. then action ya pili inatakiwa okay. um, we we have cases where victims protect the perpetrators in these kind of setups where a wife wouldn't really come out and speak against the husband and for that reason you see cases really hanging in between and not really going through the full process uh, or the full uh, provisions of the law to, to the latter. We also have the police not really understanding what domestic violence is. We have the provision of the gender death but are these police trained to understand what domestic violence is? We have had cases of uh, citizens going to the police stations, but they don't get help. Why? The police actually think it, it is okay. Go back and solve your issues. Anyone can be a victim of domestic violence regardless of age, gender, sexual orientation, faith, or class. But the worst thing to do is to do nothing at all. When institutions fail to believe victims, allow impunity, or neglect to put in place policies of protection, they send a strong signal that condones and enables violence. And in the past year, we have seen growing attention to one manifestation of this violence. Sexual harassment is experienced by almost all women at some point in their lives. No space is immune. It is rampant across institutions, private and public, including our very own. This is by no means a new issue, but the increasing public disclosure by women from all regions and all walks of life is bringing the magnitude of the problem to light. This effort to uncover society's shame is also showing the galvanizing power of women's movements to drive the action and awareness needed to eliminate harassment and violence everywhere. Yeah.